can you tease what's to come in season two for your characters? Uh, for mine, it's total havoc, man. I come in, I want everything. I want all, everything that I had prior to and, and, mo and some more. You know, so I'm looking to get to the source of where it's coming from. Tommy is going to be forced from the position of really um, a glorified, organized soldier into um, a leader. So now, Ghost opens Truth for a reason, mm -hmm. but he's also really into making it a successful business. So yeah. if you guys had to open up a cover-up business, what would you choose? Well, I mean, one of those, the, the nightclub environment was a perfect choice because it allows the music into the series. And, you know, it was, we were trying to create, uh, like I had talked about creating what Curtis Mayfield did for Superfly. Like taking the time to create the soundtrack at different moments, knowing what happens at that point and writing something that matches. Mm -hmm. And um, to even how the series got picked up, I recorded 11 songs that we would play while there were representation of the characters. Because I knew the characters, I had spent so much time talking to Courtney that I could write something that I felt like was a reflection of their character or, or their, their journey in the first season. And it made it a lot easier for them to you know, commit to it. Because there's a place for bad music in this television. That's where you hear someone's cousin's record <laughs> in the background. And she's like, what's that? Yeah, if I could do something to, like, if I was in a drug empire and don't kind of watch that money, I think I'd probably go into music and then maybe the entertainment. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, but I mean, I think that the music would be a good way. I mean, you, you know, you never know. A lot, of, a lot of money gets thrown around. You don't know exactly where the income's coming from. Might not be the worst yeah. idea in the world. My and first thought was a movie theater. Oh, there you go. That's Times a good Square one. movie theater. Oh, yeah. yeah big oh, money. Times Square now, too. Oh, yeah. But then it, it, it's expensive to put into it. Then you have to, it's easier you, to say so many, you got a certain amount of seats, so you can't put, put a certain amount of money through. And then you're going to have to prove it. the legitimacy of that original, that amount. original amount. As long as you're willing to pay taxes on it from the nightclub, no one's going to question it. Mm -hmm. How much money you said you made to sell. This is a real hot spot. <laughs> I've thought yeah. way too much about this idea. I love it. Have you guys talked much about what the relationship between your characters and Ghost were like way back in the day and kind of how we're going to get glimpses of that now? You know, just to, real quickly to put that in a, a perspective, we didn't talk about it as like we sat down at the table, now so Ghost and Tommy and so mm -hmm. I'm kidding. I think that 50 kind of did one better than that and he brought us to the neighborhood. Right. And he introduced us to people and we all sat down, we hung out together mm -hmm. and so Omari and 50 and me developed a friendship and a relationship. And so yeah. I think that when we're on screen, that plays out. And you see, you can see the energy. Like I said, like we, we've seen kids in the neighborhood and they'll be already like the defensive, the, oh, yeah. the, the young defense mechanism. Make, like he, he put it up, his face like what? Like he, he looked like he's really ready to do something. And it's because he don't know who you are until he can identify with what it is. Then he lightens up. To see his face change, I mean, this is a true young, probably 11-year-old 11, yeah. 11 kid. kid. And he came through and like, and basically 50 was telling us like, look at guys, that's, that was you two. And, yeah. and this kid's face was so hard. And like, he didn't even recognize 50. He just saw yeah, he people just looked, getting out of the car. And then finally when he saw his 50, he was like, like almost deadpan. And then he's like, and then he was 11 <laughs> years old. And he was so excited. Like, but to watch that transition was like, I was right. like, oh. He got, that's his defense go. mechanism. Like he's doing a go ahead with, come, yeah, come yeah, over come here. Through, with, yeah, get out your car. Right I, I wish you would. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as you identify with it, he go, yo. Yeah. Yeah. Come yeah. over. He's like, yo. Like leading us around. He's like, no, come here. Like, I'll, I'll knock on the door for you. I'll, <laughs> I'm going to see if he's home. I'll see if he's there yeah. for you. I love the New York City vibe of the show, but the one thing I put into question is how much driving Tommy does. Does he have like a stash of parking tickets somewhere? That we you know what? I love that question. I have thought about that question too. I would love to have that in a scene. I think you're so on point of just another one, and the, or at least open up the glove compartment. And just have all of It'd be really funny if that's the reason he got arrested after all of this. Oh my gosh! Yeah, oh yeah. Tommy, Tommy got arrested. Forget it.